sit down, Mr. Dent. It is Mr. Dent I am talking to, right? Use a real name. Two Face, if you wish. Please, sit. What is it strange? Not happy just arresting us, throwing us in this place. I wish to understand you. I have read the reports, seen the footage, and now I want to hear your side of the story. <laughs> we'll see. I assume that you feel the need to toss your coin in order to decide whether to answer my questions. You ready to find out? Well? Came up bad. Sorry. Not a problem. Guard, take Mr. Dent's coin off of him. No! Good. Now let us see what fate has in store for you. I'll kill you for this. Really? Look at your coin. It wants you to tell me about that day in the courtroom. It was painful. Elaborate. I was naive. I thought I could make a difference. Falcone was going to go down for what he had done. But he had other plans. Look at my face. I am. A combination of first, second, and third degree burning. Mm, the scar tissue is quite fascinating. You think? And that is all it took to make you the way you are. Give me my coin. Not yet. What is it strange? Are you enjoying this? Not in the slightest. Let's go back further. You were a rising star, a beacon of light for this city. A white knight riding in to save it with a dark knight not far behind. You can leave him out of this. He's wrong. They all are. No one understands the beauty of fate's hand. I'm grateful to Falcone. He gave me a clarity, a purity that few will know. Everything boils down to a simple choice. This way or that way. Good or bad. Do you really believe that? How could I not? Interesting. So all you need is this coin and everything is simple? Give me it. Or uh, what about this coin or this or these? What are you doing? Proving a point. Fate didn't make you answer my question. I did. I replaced your coin with my own. See, you answered me because I wanted you to. How is he today? The prisoner has been quiet. Since getting those coins, he has spent most of his time examining them. Good. Hello, Harvey. Are you ready to talk? Leave us. We don't want to talk. Not to you. Please, take a seat. I have one last thing to discuss, and then I will give you something in return. I don't know. I can't decide. It's too confusing. Of course it is. I want to talk about Mr. Wayne. Why? Indulge me. We don't like a guy. Hardly surprising. Did you ever consider that you were alike? A traumatic event created you. An equally traumatic event altered him. He's nothing like us. There's no risk, no danger. It's just money and girls. We should kill him. Maybe you should. Listen to me, Harvey. I am going to give you a simple choice. This is your coin. Is it? Why should I trust you? It was your father's, correct? You know every inch of it. When you close your eyes, you can feel it, can't you? Give me it, please. I want you to understand what I'm about to tell you. You believe that this coin determines the fate of your world. I, however, believe that your condition has always been present. It was there before you were attacked, and it is still there now. You probably had headaches. Your wife found you unpredictable. Scary sometimes. Give us it! I'm going to throw the coin in the air. If you let it fall, 
I will do whatever I can to cure you. I will help you become the man you used to be. Boy. If you grab it, I will let you loose in Arkham City. And I will tell you what Catwoman is doing right this second. I can't decide. You have to. Hmm. At this moment, Catwoman is preparing to steal the contents of the safe in your old campaign office. The bitch. We need to stop her. And you may. Goodbye, Mr. Dent. Interview. Pamela 
Lillian Isley, November 12th, 11.33 a.m. Good morning, Pamela. How are you today? Fine. Today is a special day. What do you mean? This is the anniversary of my new life. When I found my true self. My destiny. Are you referring to the event with Dr. Woodrow? Yes. What else? Of course, at the time, I thought Jason had poisoned me. But in retrospect, he did me a huge favor. And why do you believe what he did has helped you? He showed me the bigger world. A world I should protect. Of course, my first offer was rejected. Offer? You tried to kill everyone in Gotham. Well, sometimes you need to prove back hard in order to make something flourish. Patient interview, Pamela Lillian Isley, November 14th, 10.21 a.m. Hello, Pamela. Today I'd like to go back to something you said in our last conversation. Ask me anything you like. You said your first offer to help Gotham was rejected. How can you possibly believe that? Well, what do you mean? You released thousands of poisonous spores into Gotham, killed hundreds of people. How does that help anybody? I'm not interested in bodies, Doctor. Horrible, fleshy sacks walking around destroying my poor babies with their greed and arrogance. But aren't you one of those fleshy sacks? You're a... were a doctor, too. How can you turn your back on us? Quite easily as it happens. But not you, Stephen. You're different. I feel we have a connection. Really? You do? Of course. Pamela, I got you what you asked for. Do you like it? Oh yes, Stephen, I love it. Such a beautiful flower. Do you mind if I keep it? Oh no, Pamela, I can't leave it. It's against all the rules. I'll just bring it and show it to you when I visit. But it's me, Stephen. I get so lonely on my own. You wouldn't want me to be lonely. Would you? No, oh, of course not. You keep it. Just don't let anyone see. Really. No one. You can trust me, Stephen. Thank you. Now give me a kiss. Uh, I can't. People will see you. No one's watching. What's wrong with you? Don't you love me? Call me Ivy. Of course I love you. How should I know, woman? It does seem careless of you to have lost him. I have no time for your games, Miss Isley. Tell me where you have him. We have security for interviewing him leaving your cell last night. So? Do I need to spell it out? We know you hypnotized him, or, or whatever it is you do. We know he took you somewhere, but conveniently, security cameras across the island were mysteriously covered by leaves and flowers at 3 a.m. Now tell me what he is. I'm not saying a word. Exactly what I'm telling you to do. We found him. No thanks to you. The poor man could have died. So? He has a wife, a child. As do the plants he travels underfoot. The spores he breathes in and destroys have children. Why does he deserve anything more than them? You people ignore what is happening in front of your eyes. I refuse to put the welfare of plants before the welfare of people. And that is why you will lose. There's more happening than you know, Warden. It's all connected. You wanted to see me, Warden? Yes. I need you to reevaluate Julian Day. Oh, didn't you see? I turned in my evaluation last week. I saw it, and I need you to do it again. I'm not sure that... You have to understand, Day is a manipulator. A very experienced one, and you, well, you're still in your residency. I don't see anyone doubting that Mr. Day is insane and should be tried as such. I'm actually considering writing a paper about him. Miss Quinzel, I'm giving you a chance here. Do you know what happens if the prosecution can try Day as a sane man? He'll get the death penalty. And the city will thank you for helping to remove a cold-blooded killer from its streets. So, we're not here to help rehabilitate the sick? 
<laughs> this is a prison, Miss Quinzel, not a mental health clinic. If you want to see a successful end to your residency, I suggest you keep that in mind and reevaluate Julian Day. I see. Perhaps... Perhaps I was a bit hasty with my evaluation. Excellent. I'm glad we could... In fact, I think it would be excellent experience if I was the first to give all new inmates psychological evaluations. You're not a doctor yet. That's not your... Like you said, I need more experience with these manipulators. Perhaps more exposure to these types of criminals will help me learn to tell the difference between the fakers and the truly insane. Why would you want to spend any more time with these freaks than you have to? The criminal mind is a fascinating subject for a research paper. Or a book. <sighs> it's no skill off my back. Knock yourself out. A killer is a killer is a killer. You think it matters to the victim or their families if he claims that he's insane? No. I'm not making special exceptions for all of these freaks that seem to be popping up. This one was trying to play the system just like the rest of them. Feigned insanity is no defense in my courtroom. You don't think it's a little... blatant? I mean, with his obsession for the holidays. In this city, they'll love it. Poetic justice, I say. All right. Well, Christmas Eve it is then. Excellent. I'm throwing a little Christmas party that night. We're going to watch the execution from my home. You should come by. Bring your wife. Pick up your gift. I'll do that. And make sure you have something for my wife, too. She likes diamonds. Hmm. <laughs> And they told me you were soft. Harleen Quinzel? Call me Harley. Everyone does. I'm surprised you want to intern here at Arkham. I've always had a thing for extreme personalities. You can't deny there's an element of glamour to these super criminals. I warn you right now, these are hardcore psychotics. Most would rather kill you than speak to you. I'm sure I'll be fine, Doctor. They'll eat you for breakfast. I mean it. One or two of them will enjoy it, too. Be careful. Patient interview number one. So, I'm your first, and I touch... Well, you know what they say, you... Never forget your first time. I'll try to make it memorable for you. Oh, you already have. Tell me, why do you do the things you do? Why do you think I do it? Fame, notoriety, a desire to stand out from the crowd, a wicked sense of humor. <sighs> You're good. How did you figure me out, Doc? I've had doctors poking around in here for years, and no one was as astute, and if you don't mind my saying, beautiful as you. Really? Ah, oh, you're just playing with me. Well, you'll never know, will you? Unless... Unless what? Tell me! Care to tell me how these got in my office? Simple, really? I put them there. Why? You don't like flowers? I think the guards would be interested to know you've been out of your cell. Oh, if you really were going to tell, you already would have. How do you know I haven't already? Oh, sweet. I like you. I really do. Even your name. Rework it a bit and we get... Harley Quinn, like the clown. I know. I've heard it before. It's a name that puts a smile on my face. It makes me think... There's someone here I can relate to. Someone who might like to hear my secrets. Really? Go on. Not here, my dear. Too many ears and eyes. Come back tonight. I'll be ready for you. He's crazy, you know. Who? Batman? No, Santa Claus. Of course, Batman. Always Batman. I've seen it in his eyes. Screaming mad starters and dishonest, hiding his face behind a fright mask. Well, no masks for me. 
slide in the madness. Why won't he admit it? He's up there in his belfry laughing at us. And the real gag is the miserable liar is allowed to run free while I'm in here. That's really incisive. Then you understand, don't you? You know why I do what I have to do. You know Gotham's only real savior is me. of humor. Ah, the strong and silent type, eh? Think you're safe behind that mask? Give me 20 minutes in a can opener and I'll have you whimpering like a school girl. You might like it. That's enough, patient. Guard, leave us. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. My name is Professor Hugo Strange. And you are... Two-Face. Catwoman... <laughs> Batman! We can play these games as long as you like. Great! I love games. Not in my facility, you won't. I'm offering you this opportunity to make a deal. I am fully aware of your condition. The last thing you have is time. But I can make your final days more comfortable. And in return, I'd be giving you... Uh... I wish to study you. I need to know why you are the way you are. <laughs> I don't have long, Doc. You're going to need more than some psycho mumbo-jumbo to get to the bottom of what's wrong with me. Oh, I have more than that. Much more. So, do we have a deal? How are you feeling today? You promised me another doctor, Strange. Maybe you shouldn't have killed the one I sent last week. What made you do it? Fish gotta swim, birds gotta fly. Besides, it was worth it to see the look on her face. Hey, you know what? I think I've got a piece of it here in my pocket. You are trying my patience. That was the third doctor you've killed. Well, keep on sending them, Doc. I'm trying to break my record. I think it is time for you to do something for me. <laughs> Name it, Doc. Tell me how you came to be. Explain what made you what you are today. How you come to be sitting across the table from me. Dying. Is that all? Well, I guess you could say I once had a very bad day. Really? Go on. It was a Thursday night. Things had been getting worse. I was three days from the bank foreclosing on my home. The chemical plant I worked nights at was about to lay off half the workforce. And I was sitting in the hospital, holding the hand of my pregnant wife, wishing to God that she wasn't dead. That must have been upsetting for you. Probably was. Back then, though, all I knew was that if I didn't let old man Falcone's men into the plant that night, they'd have killed me, too. So here's the thing. I had to decide. Could I live without her? Was there any point going on? I've got to admit it. I was scared. Not of being dead, you understand. No one would blame you if you were. It is perfectly common. Do I look common? No. I was scared of the part just before you die, when you don't know what is about to happen, when you're desperately clutching at life and trying to hold on with slippery, blood-covered hands. 
Jones. So I made a decision right there. And what was that? That? Well, that is a story for another day, Strange. I think I may need to see a doctor. Get me one. You were telling me about the night your wife died. Oh, no, Hugo. As I recall, I was waiting for you to send me another doctor. We both know I have sent you three more doctors. Did you? Yes. One was left dismembered outside the elevator to my office. The other two have not been seen since they were sent to you. How careless. Listen, Doc. Professor... Okay, Professor, I'll give you a little more. I just hope you're taking notes. It's the day after, and I'm standing in the freezing rain, just staring at the chemical plant, feeling numb. Jeannie was dead. It didn't seem real. I can remember the day I first met her, her infectious smile as I told her bad joke after bad joke. How, even after living with the pathetic wretch I was, she still wanted my child. And then they arrived. <laughs> Reality's way of yanking me another wedgie. Falcone's men told me to cheer up. He said, things could be worse. I asked him how. He grabbed me by the collar, pulled me close. He'd been eating garlic, and each word stank as he threatened to perform oral surgery on me with a nail and a brick. A creative guy. They hand me a box. I remember thinking it was heavy. Was it a bomb? A gun? I'd never used a gun before. Were they that heavy? And what was in the box? How's that doctor coming along? I'll get you one. And when you do, I'll tell you the rest. You are looking a little better, yes. Well, I have my good days and bad days, but I do try and start each one with a smile. <laughs> are you ready to continue your story? No, yeah, why not? So where was I? The box. Ah, yes, the box. <laughs> so there I was, tearing open this box, expecting the worst. And all it had in it was a crazy red dome and a cloak. <laughs> ah, I thought they were having a joke with me, but oh no. They made me put it on. They said it was a disguise. It would keep me safe. It smelled like garlic. And that was it, really. I was dressed up like a spaceman, barely able to see, trying to break into the one place in this town that had given me a job. Have you ever tried to walk with an enormous fishbowl on your head? Don't answer that. It's hard. I couldn't see where I was going. I must have tripped one of the alarms. I heard muffled gunfire. I panicked and tried to run. And then I saw him. Who? That man. Really? Yes, really. Batman tried to hit me. I moved out of the way, but, well, what you need to understand is I had this giant bowl on my head, and I lost my balance. It's like life, really. One minute everything's bad, and the next your wife's dead and you're hanging on for dear life, suspended over a tank of experimental chemicals. I'm sure he'd say he tried to save me, but we all know he didn't. I fell for a second... Just as I hit the surface, I thought I may just get away with this. I assume that wasn't the case. Do I look like I got away with it? I was drowning. The chemicals were burning my skin. My entire body felt like it was on fire. And it was all his fault. Whose fault? Batman's? Who else? Yours? Come again? Let me tell you what I believe. I believe that you have fabricated a series of events that you use to conceal the truth about your condition. I have read 12 different accounts of your past, all different, except for one detail. Batman. What can I say? I like to keep things interesting. 
A wise man once told me that if you have to have an origin story, you're better off making it multiple choice. And never facing up to the truth of what happened. What you did. How you got here. Oh, I know exactly how I got here. A big truck brought me here from Arkham. You remember the asylum, don't you? Of course. Well, good. Because I'd hate to think that I'd fabricated seeing you watching me in my cell all those times. Excuse me? Hugo, you merry maniac. You were obsessed with me. <laughs> you all were trying to get in here. Next thing you'll tell me, it wasn't you who sent old Sharpie over the edge. Nice work, by the way. Thank you. So here's the thing. If you want to make sure that no one else finds out about your past, you should start poking your nose into mine. Oh, and send me another duck, duck. I think I need a second opinion. cities diseased. February 1921. Construction has begun on the Elizabeth Arkham Asylum for the criminally insane. Finally, I will be able to treat my patients properly. April 1st, 1921. Returned home today to find my family murdered by my patient Martin Hawking. I feel oddly detached. September 17th, 1921. Today I begin treatment of Martin Hawkins. I will rehabilitate this man. April 2nd, 1922. During treatment with Hawkins, I resorted to extreme measures. It proved more than he could sustain. June 4th, 1923. Gotham City is lost. The lunatics are irrepressible, incurable. The only sensible treatment, eradication. October 18, 1923. Am I a doctor or a murderer? I can no longer differentiate. I will give my last breath to deal with the filth that infects Gotham City.
Patient interview nine. Dr. Crane continues to evade questions. I believe he is quite sane, just evil. He takes no interest in the people he has hurt. His research appears to be the only motivating factor in his life. What is it about fear that drives your obsession? Fear drives everything, Stephen. Everything. Your life is governed by fear. Every decision you make is a product of that fear. Don't be ridiculous. You married your wife. Margaret, isn't it? Because you were scared of dying alone. You have children because you're scared of leaving nothing behind that really matters. You go to the doctors because you're scared of dying. Do I need to go on? No. I think that will be all for today. Guards? Today I have another interview with Crane. I cannot say I am looking forward to it. I have been feeling anxious. I don't like to admit it, but I think he's getting to me. How are you today? I keep telling you, this is my session. It was your session, Doctor. But not anymore. Are you okay, Doc? Uh, I think... Yes, I... Oh, he's fine. Just questioning his grip on reality. You should be doing the same any second. Uh, is that you? Wait, what are you doing? Get off of me. Help! I need help here! I can't breathe! <laughs> like I said, you're all part of my experiment now. Secret places in forgotten parts of town. 
ugly wasteland <laughs> where the locals tumble unawares into a candy striped tent. <laughs> the Dollatrons are the first to greet them with open arms and <sighs> perfect feet. The climax of the show is when I take them to see Mother. Oh, I tell you, they are amazed by my imagination. Confounded by my dexterity, as each is transformed into a beautiful work of art. But Mother is hard to please. She wants more, always more. Never satisfied, always driving me to work harder, to obtain perfection. And I will. Night has drawn its curtain yet again, and the circus moves on. Our numbers swollen? to a different patch of earth. On the dark horizon, the building tops glimmer, the heat and smog of industry shrouds a den of criminals and beasts. Gotham is her name. Yamash. I tell you, the circus has come home. My dear Yamash, it is time you learned the truth about your mother, your real I remember not her name or how she found me wallowing in that pit of despair. <laughs> like an angel, she swept into my turvy world, dragged me, screaming, <laughs> from shapeless chaos, and wrapped me in her arms. She was a beauty, Yano, a masterpiece, perfect in every way, until Mother Goat found her. Imagine my horror when I emerged from that dreamy soup and discovered what she'd done. Placenta face, cork on smile, ribbon of ruptured flesh. Ooh, the nails had done their work. But by then my seed was already sown. Your life already begun. Mother would have killed you both had I not stopped her. <laughs> Saved you from her rage. <laughs> Day and night like words. Month after month, sculpting her loathsome clay to recapture the beauty that saved me that night. The night of your creation. She clung to me as you grew, as I toiled to make her right again. But nothing, please, Mother Goat! Nothing. I did all I could to fix her, to make her perfect. But by the time you came along, I couldn't even look upon that spoiled canvas of her face. I couldn't let that be the face that greeted you in this world. I had to end it, Yalos. For you. For Mother. She left me no choice. Gordon. He's so clean. I sometimes think he does it just to lord his integrity over the rest of us. Easy, Gillian. I'm telling you, Roman. It's time we took Gordon off the payroll. Permanently. That's enough, Gil. A cop like Gordon is good PR for the PD. We get him under control, and he could be even more useful to us. Control? It will be easier to send my men to beat some sense into him. Like Detective Flass, that approach has already failed. Find a way to put a collar on the man, and it'll be that much easier to tighten the leash. And how do I do that? Not my problem, Gillian. That's what I pay you for. Gordon is a man of principles. Work on those. What do you want me to do, become his confidant? Gordon trusts me about as far as he can throw me. So, not very far at all. Yeah, I get it. I'm a big guy. You're a fat slob who needs to start earning his keep. Now, men like Gordon have a weakness for a certain type of woman. They call it the Lancelot Syndrome or some such crap. What are we talking about here? You want me to shut up a honeypot? I'll leave the details to you. Find me some dirt and try not to make a mess of it. What do you want me to do? Hold your hand? This bad guy's got some of my men really spooked. Some of them are even calling in sick. Then fire their asses. I don't have time for fence-sitters. Soon I'll have all of City Hall in my pocket. 
And I'm not about to lose it over some cold feet. So what should I do about it? Cement shoes? You figure it out. Commissioner Loeb? Yes? Warden Joseph on the line. Prisoner's here, sir. Very good. Send him in. But we haven't got the suit off him yet. He's dangerous. Are you sure? Of course. Victor Fries and I have much in common. We will be fine. Welcome to my facility. Please, take a seat. I prefer to stand. Why am I here? Oh, Victor, there will be plenty of time for that later. Right now, I wish to get to know you. Discover how you came to have such a frosty outlook on life. I have nothing to say to you. You may have taken my weapons, but my suit still has considerable offensive capabilities. I will freeze the marrow in your legs. Each bone will shatter and fracture while you remain completely aware of your impending paralysis, begging me to end you. I don't think that you will do that, Victor. Really? Why not? Simple. If you hurt me, your wife will die. Where is she? Where is my wife? Nora is in safe hands. Now, let's discuss an incident from your childhood. No. Then this is over. Guard. Wait. What do you wish to learn? Your early years were troubled. I was not a sociable child, but that is all. Even your parents disowned you. They sent you away to a reform school, correct? They did not understand my work. Your work? According to a police report, you froze over a dozen of your neighbor's pets. I have always had an interest in cryonic preservation. I didn't understand why my parents allowed our sick pets to die instead of attempting to save them. So I set about finding my own way. I intended to revive all of those creatures. But you didn't. Which brings us to Nora. Have you ever seen a flower die? Watched something that was once so beautiful, so full of life, collapse and rot from within. You refer to Nora's illness. It seems like yesterday when I first found her. It all happened so quickly. Suddenly, I was losing her. Did you see Kent? What about your employer, Gothcorp? I hid it from them. Diverting resources from Gothcorp's research in an attempt to find the cure. But in the end, I failed. Time was running out. I knew that if I was discovered, Nora would die. Why take that risk? Do you know what it is to love someone? To really love them? No. Nora was all I could think of. I reran the diagnostics, re-examined every detail from every angle, certain that I had missed something. I cursed myself for being so blind, so stupid. Surely there was a cure. I just needed more time. Then I realized what I had to do. I had worked without sleep for a week. My needs didn't seem important. Sleep didn't matter. Food didn't matter. There was only her. I looked at Nora, and I told her that I loved her. She told me there was nothing I could do, that I, we, should just accept fate. She smiled her beautiful smile as she said it. I promised to cure her, and then I pressed the button. You cryogenically froze her, keeping her on ice, so to speak, while you worked on a cure. It broke your heart, but now you had all the time in the world. Did you feel relieved? I went home and fell into a deep sleep. For the first time since we discovered Nora's illness, 
and had to dream. But for weeks I had ignored my superior's attempts to contact me. For next morning I overslept. By the time I got to the lab, Ferris Boyle, the CEO, was there waiting. What did he do? He accused me of industrial espionage, which I denied. But then his guards found Nora. Boyle told me that, like all of my research, she belonged to him. I was enraged. I attacked him. His guards beat me back, and in the struggle, I was drenched by the cryogenic chemical I had created. I lay on the floor, helpless, watching the guards steal Nora away. Boyle told me it was a tragedy for such a promising mind to perish in a lab accident. Then he left me to die. But you survived. The chemicals were absorbed into my body and transformed my metabolism. My body went numb. I felt a strange tingling, then searing pain all over. Each breath ignited my lungs. I clawed my way back to a refrigeration unit, and as I closed the door behind me, I felt the icy chill calm my aching body. Things suddenly seemed clear. What seemed clear? Finding a cure for Nora? No. Revenge. Boyle would pay. You failed to kill Ferris Boyle, though, didn't you? Yes. Why? You know why. Batman. Though he did return Nora to safety. Until you got her. See? There you go. Blame me. Blame your parents because you failed to revive the neighbor's pets. Blame Ferris Boyle for spoiling your plans to cure Nora. Blame Batman for stopping your revenge against Boyle. And now your Nora is in danger. Because of you. No, Victor. Because of you. You have always had a heart of ice. You stole people's pets. You stole Gothcorp resources. And since then, you've stolen so much more for your own selfish scientific inquiries. If you had shared your genius with others, devoted your energy to medicine instead of crime, perhaps your ice princess would be at home now, preparing you a hot meal instead of being delivered to the Joker. No! You could have saved Nora a long time ago, Victor. It's all for her. Everything. I will get her back. And when I do, I'm coming for you. Thank you. We are done now. Nora. We found a prisoner attempting to break into your office, sir. I see. Leave us. Yes, sir. Well, well, as I live and breathe, Professor Hugo Strange. Your posters really don't do you justice. You really are far more evil-looking in real life. Charmed. Tell me, what do you plan to do, Miss Kyle? I assume that you were attempting to break into my office in order to retrieve your ill-gotten gains. You stole them from me. Hardly. The items were confiscated upon your arrest. Yeah, about that. This holiday camp of yours is quaint and all, Hugo. But I don't think I'll be staying too long. Escape is impossible. A girl loves a challenge. So do I. Tell me, what would you do if I let you go? Attempt to escape? Try and find the confiscated items? Contact the Batman. Why would I contact him? It's his fault I'm in here. Is it? I believe you would have escaped if greed had not got the better of you. He was actually in the process of rescuing you, was he not? I didn't need his help. Or any man's, it appears. Come on. You're going somewhere with this? Spit it out. I've been studying you. I can see. My eyes are up here, by the way. 
very amusing. Tell me, what was it like growing up alone, fending for yourself, doing whatever was necessary to stay alive? Please, I'm tearing up here. And Holly, what would you do if I sent my men after her? Touch her and you're dead. Have you calmed down yet? Where is she? That depends on your next answer. If you could save one person tonight, who would it be? Holly? Or the Batman? He can look after himself. Good. Holly is safe for now. Let us talk about Batman. What do you think I can tell you that you don't already know? You've been sending your goons after him for months. He said you were studying him. So you speak. Good. You never knew your father, correct? Enough, Strange. This is over. If you say so. Captain, do you have the girl in your sights? Yes, sir. Kill her. No! Are you prepared to talk? I thought so. Keep the girl targeted, Captain. You bastard. Shall we continue? Your father. Did you ever meet him? Never knew the son of a bitch. Unfortunate. He certainly seems to have made an impact on you. The distrust of men, for example. Your relationship with Batman. Would you call it close? Me and the brooding one get along just fine. But you want more. <laughs> but you can't trust men, can you? What? Look, he's spoken for. He must be. How else could he resist all this? You are both very similar, aren't you? A shared disregard for the law. A belief that you are doing the right thing. And a similar taste in attire. But beneath the surface, there is a weakness. Like how? You both risk everything for a chance at redemption. You tell yourself it's to help her. He does the same for the boy. It's all just to make his life more complete. To become the father he never knew. You don't know anything about him. And neither do you. He hasn't confided in you because he doesn't trust you. And it hurts, doesn't it? I touched a raw nerve, didn't I? Are you still here? You're hurt because he knows who you are. But you don't know anything about him. Do you uh, love him? No! <laughs> Holly is safe. I have little interest in the life of a teenage delinquent. Unless, of course, she finds herself in my facility. What was all this about, Strange? Do you enjoy making people beg? Not at all. I am only interested in what makes people do what they do. Soon you will not have to worry about the Batman. Steal what you like, do what you must in a futile attempt to steal his heart. You will fail. You sound pretty sure of yourself. Plans are afoot, Miss Kyle. Soon you may wish to reevaluate your admiration for him. I will be the one standing over his body, and the world will know that Hugo Strange is better than him. Yeah, whatever. Two Face has placed what you are looking for in his safe in his old campaign office. He is someone else who cannot let go of his past. I hope that the contents of that safe make you happy.